Hebrews chapter 12. If you have your Bibles, Hebrews chapter 12. And if you, you probably got one of these. If you didn't get one of these, raise your hand and we'll give you one. It's just a note so for you to take notes if you're a note taker. And it gives you all the scriptures here. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. And today is the last uh, part of this series called Out of the Heart. And uh, we've been dealing with a lot of really tough issues uh, like pride and envy and all of this stuff. And today is bitterness. Today is bitterness. And it's, it's kind of funny how you guys came back with this message of, hey, uh, take care of each other, are the relationships that we have. And bitterness is one of the things that destroys that, those relationships. Bitterness can quickly destroy the best of friends. Uh, bitterness can destroy marriages, can destroy uh, tight-knit families. And so we, as Christians, have to really take care of uh, the bitterness within our hearts. So today, if anything, you're going to find out whether you're a spirit-filled person or you're still struggling with your cardinal nature. Uh, Paul talks about that if you want to read it in chapter 7 of Ephesians, uh, Romans, chapter 7 of, of the book of Romans. And he talks about how we struggle with that. And, uh, and if, if, if you're not at the point where you've allowed God, and we, in this series we've talked about this, allowed God to really just come into your life and take over that was the la last week's uh, uh, message was control. You know, just take over, give him all the control. Uh, then, then if you don't do that, then you're always going to be fighting this uh, sinful thought that you have, sinful uh, reaction that you have as a human being. We're all born in sin, and so automatically we, we are selfish, and, and uh, we want our way, and... Uh, you know, and as we get older and we, we, we fight for that, don't we? We fight really hard for getting our way. We fight really hard for our voice to be heard. And, and so along the way, we forget that as Christians, and so if we are followers of Christ, that that isn't something that we ought to be practicing with each other, that we ought to be practicing the fruits of the Spirit, which is love and compassion and all of these beautiful things that sh should come out of our hearts, our minds, and our mouth when we're with each other. And so how to test that is... Uh, and you don't even have to worry about when or how to test that. It, you're going to be tested. And it's when conflict happens within our own Christian family. When conflict happens, how we really react towards one another is, it really determines how our heart is. And so, you know, this week was one of those weeks for me. This week was one of those weeks where uh, I didn't just uh, have the opportunity to see how my heart was, was uh, once, probably a dozen times this week. And, uh, you know, and, and I, just, I just remember constantly trying to be in that thought and asking the Lord, would you lead me through this meeting? Would you guide me through this talk? Would you guide me through my emotions? Because I know I'm already feeling stressed out. I'm already feeling upset. But would you, would you some, do something in me to just continue to allow me to know that you're, that you're a part of my life and that I'm here to serve you? And let me tell you, it, it wasn't hard. I mean, it wasn't hard. It wasn't easy. It was very hard. But I want to start with this piece of scripture to set the tone for this message. And it's not a very long message, so hopefully that encourages you already. Uh, but but I, want, I want you to notice just at the very beginning of the first three words, what it says. And it, says, it starts like this. Make every effort, okay, make every effort to live at peace with all men and to be holy because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's a big statement. I could just read, and I'll read on, but that's a humongous statement. So we are to be seeking to be holy in Christ. If we're not, then he says, you're, you're not going to be able to experience a life with me. You're not, you're, you don't have anything in me. All right? You're just a, somebody that says, I believe and I want to believe and I want to be a part of you. But if you don't get to this point where last week was lose control, lose control of your, of your, uh, of your thoughts, of, uh, of your understanding of life, I guess I should say, and allow him to fill it with you, then we're going we're gonna to miss the mark. And then he says, and see, that it, uh, and see to it that no one misses the grace of God, and that, what does he say here? And that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. And that's what we're going to focus on today, that bitter root. Because the reality is that this... I love how this writer here in Hebrews uses the word root because it depicts something in depth, something that's, that's deep within. It's not, something, it's not a surface thing. 
And if you're ever, have you ever experienced taking out a, a, a weed or, a, or, a, or a, a tree that kind of grew up at first as a weed, now it's a, it's a tree, or, or, or maybe a, a shrub that, all right, I'm, 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 uh, I'm over it, I, I want to plant a new shrub, and you want to take it out. And it's really difficult if the roots are really dug in, right? You have to start digging deep with a shovel or, or, or get a tractor or something and, and pull it out from the roots. If not, it's just going to grow back again. And so that's the picture that we get. And for, for a lot of us, you know, we, we allow a bad experience to create a bitter root within us. And so that's what the, this uh, uh, author is trying to tell us to, to be careful of. And it could be anything. It could be a situation maybe in, in work, or it could be a person, a person that hurt you along the way. And it could have been when you were really little. I mean, if we're going to get real, I, I know that there's been times where an adult abuses a little child, and then that little child creates this bitter root, this root, you know, this bitterness towards that person for making me go through that. And maybe, maybe uh, you were in a, in a in a relationship that didn't last long, and it didn't last because of the actions of that other person, and and uh, and so that creates bitterness in you. Maybe a, a best friend of yours uh, acted. Uh, you know, rude to you, and, and you thought, why? I thought we were friends. How could you do that? How could you say that? How can you act that way? And that creates that bitter root within you, and it starts. And the thing about bitterness is it doesn't just affect that one individual. Once that bitterness gets in you, it begins to affect everything in your life, not just other people. You begin to experience that all of a sudden you're in a bad mood all the time, or or you just don't want to do good anymore. You know, you don't want to help anybody. You, you don't, you just, energy is kind of depleted anymore. And, and you just find yourself always seeking the, the negativity of things. You're always focusing on the negative versus focusing on the positive. And that's bitterness. And God says, you know, and that's, that's something that we all need to give over to Him, that we need, we need to have Him come in and, and do this this uh, excavation of that root. Because the reality is that as, as hard as we try to get rid of that, you know, it, it's, it's impossible to do it without the power and the Spirit of God. Make every effort to see that no bitter root grows up in your heart. If you're taking notes there, uh, bitterness contaminates everything. It, and it, it doesn't, the, when I was thinking about that, I remember living in Georgia and uh, noticing that there was this uh, weed, I guess. Uh, well, I, I guess we want to. It wasn't always a weed. It was a beautiful plant, and it's called kudzu. Anybody heard of kudzu? Kudzu. Yep. You guys that have been to the south, you know exactly what I'm talking about, don't you? So this was uh, brought from Japan in like the 1800s, and they thought it was just a beautiful plant and it would look good in the garden, kind of like ivy, something like that. But this plant has big leaves and really thick. Uh, uh, not roots, but uh, vines that are really hard to break. Uh, and then it also produces purple, beautiful flower, and it smells good. So they brought it in, and then they see it just take over and grow really fast. And so they thought this would be a good plant for erosion purposes. So then they start planting it everywhere in the south. And, uh, and I got a picture. Do, do we have that picture of kudzu up there? There it is. If you can look closely, there's a house in that picture. And that root just took it over. That's kudzu right there. And it goes up post and lines, and it just, it just kills everything. It destroys everything in its path. And it grows really fast. I mean, if you don't, if you don't prune it, if you don't watch it, you know, before, before long, you're like, how in the world did this get like this? And that's kind of like bitterness. If we don't take care of bitterness within our hearts and in our lives, before you know it, it's really taking control over a lot of part of your life. The way that you think, the way that you speak, the way that you see other people, the way that you, you know, uh, a, a lot of people say, I don't trust many people anymore. I don't, have, I don't have faith in people anymore. That comes from bitterness. And if you don't be careful, then it just, it takes over your life and it really ends up killing everything that's important to you. Not just that one relationship. So today I kind of want, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about, how to, how to take care of bitterness in our heart. And the Bible tells us how exactly to do it. So if you're a follower of Christ, you're, you're, you're can't, you can't wait to hear it because you want to learn how to do this. If you're not, if you're here visiting and you don't consider yourself a Christian or a believer, then, then you're going to be like, yeah, I don't want to do that. That's, that's just stupid. I will not uh, succumb or submit myself that way because that's just 
you, you're going to think it's just more pain. And the opposite is true. This past week, uh, my, my seven-year-old daughter, Annika, brought over a friend after school. Uh, just out of the blue, this little girl says, hey, I'm coming over. Okay, parents were okay with that. So we brought her over, and they went into Annika's room, and they were playing with dolls. And you know how you girls do, right? You, you just take everything out of the closet. Everything has to be out of the closet, dresses and shoes and Barbies and everything else. Yes, Rochelle, I said you girls, all right? Just deal with it. And, uh, <laughs> and so she was done. Her little friend left, and now her room is just a mountain of toys. And I looked at it, and I said, okay, you're going to clean that up, right? She says, yeah, I'll clean it up. Okay, great. And so then the next morning, we wake up, and we, we get ready, get the kids ready, and I walk in in her room to get something, and I'm ste- over step, stepping on dolls and, and little 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 shoes, uh, high heel little shoes like this big, and man, those dig in your feet and the bottom of your feet really well. Uh, so I'm, I'm having to overstep all of this stuff, and so we're at our, the breakfast table, and I said to her, I said, Anika, I thought you said you were going to clean your room, and she looked at me, and she was very serious about this, and she said, I know, Daddy, but I got really busy yesterday, <laughs> and I looked at Denise, and I just, oh boy, I wanted to laugh out, like, laugh like you just did, and, and so I just took a breath, and I said, really? I said, tell me about your day then. And she said, she says, well, she says, we got home from school, and uh, mom made us go to the park. She made you go to the park to play. And I said, okay. And she said, then we came back, and I was going to clean the room, but Evie got sad. Evie is her sister, five years old, because I was going to clean my room, and she wanted to play. So I thought, well, I'll play with her first. So she played with Evie for a while, and then dad, and then mom asked me to help her make uh, hamburger patties for the rodeo, you know, and I, and she said, and so I couldn't say no to mom, and, uh, and so she helped, and then by the, by the time we were done, it was time for me to take a bath, brush my teeth, and go to bed, so it was a really busy day, and I said, wow, that is a busy day, you're, you're so right, I said, but would you be able to have time today, you think, to clean your room, and and she said, oh, yeah, today, after school, I will, I will get on it. And, uh, and she comes home from school, and, and I just, first thing, even before she dropped her book bag, I said, what are you going to do next? And she said, oh, yeah, I'm going to clean my room. So she went, <laughs> and, and she cleaned her room. But in, this, in the same way, you know, it's, clean her room wasn't going to be fun. It was fun making it a mess, but it wasn't going to be fun cleaning it because now she's got to remember where everything goes and mom's a Marine and stuff got to go where they got to go. And so, so she's not enjoying that at all and, and, and she's, she's trying to put it off as much as possible. And I, and I think when we have these things in our hearts, specifically bitterness, because bitterness comes from, from, uh, from hurt, from somebody really hurting you. And so... When, when it's in there, the last thing you want to do is, is deal with it. Because if you, if you deal with it, that means you gotta, you got to remember who it was. you got to think about that person. And that's the last thing that you want to do. Because when you, when you left that person alone, if it, if, a, if it was a person who caused that bitterness, you thought, finally it's over, I will never, ever have to think about that person again. Never will I waste a moment thinking about that person again in my life. And if you're a follower of Christ, and he's like, okay, I, I get that, and I know that you used to be that person, but now you have new life in me, and guess what we're going to do? I, I need you holy. And that means I need you cleansed. I, I need you brand new for me. And so the, if you're taking notes, this number one, expose the objects of your bitterness. Ephesians chapter 5, 11 says, with, with fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather, he says, or have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather, he says, expose them. Expose them. And, and that's the one part that maybe it's going to be really difficult for you to do. And unless you're able to do that, you're not going to be able to move on to the next thing and the next thing. Exposing that alone takes a lot, I think, a lot of strength. It takes a lot of effort in your part. It takes a lot of willingness. It's kind of like, oh, I got to go clean my room. Okay, here I go. And God says, Edgar, now I know you've got bitterness and and I know, I know that uh, you remember where it comes from. And, and part of your notes, it says bitterness um, uh, with whom or what are you bitter? And I, I kind of want you to write something down in there. Um, as I was thinking about that, I, I had a big list. It wasn't just one thing. And I thought, oh man, there is a lot in there. And I've got to 
figure this out, if I'm going to continue to be served or uh, to serve the Lord, to be used by Him. But that alone, to, to remember that person, what they did to you or, and to me, is, is hard enough. But that's the first step. God wants you to be able to do that. And as soon as you do that, then God says, okay, now that you've got that person on there, you, you, got, you, you got that picture, you got that name, you got that face in your, head, in, your, in your mind, he says, now I want you to forgive them. I want you to cancel their debt. And I think if it was hard enough to get to past the first thing, which is bringing them back up out of that dark place that you had in your heart, now he's asking for you to forgive that person. How do you forgive a child abuser? How do you forgive, you know, uh, somebody that just cut you so deep that you would hope and at one time in your life that that person some, get in an accident and just die or something? How do you forgive that pain? And that's what God is asking us to do. And of course, Jesus gets asked the same question. How many times do we forgive in chapter 18 of Matthew? And then um, he tells a story. He tells a story about a master who had all of these servants, and then all of these servants owed stuff to him, basically money. And so he's ready to collect, and he brings this first guy in, and he says, you know, you need to pay up. Uh, pay up all the stuff that you owe. And he owns like a lot of money, a lot of gold, so much so that there's no way in a lifetime that this guy was going to be able to pay his master. And so he asks, I guess for just another day or something, he says, you know, could you give me just a little bit more time? And I promise you, I will pay everything that I owe you. Well, the master knows better. It's not, it's not going to happen. But because he had enough courage to get up and say, would, would you consider forgiving my debt or giving me more time, the master decides, you know what, I'm just going to forgive your debt because you, you can't pay me anyways. And that's the message that I want to that I wanna think about with you this morning, that sometimes we're waiting for us to get, uh, for, a, for a person to say I'm sorry to you or to at least acknowledge that they did something wrong to you or at least just to not their head, you know, when, when you tell them, remember when you hurt me, and if they can do this once, I mean, might, that might be good enough. But God knows that that won't, that that won't be good enough. He knows that even though you might say the words, okay, I needed to hear that from you, that that pain and that hurt is still in there. And that bitterness hasn't gone away. He knows that there isn't anything that person that really caused that deep scar within you, that there's nothing that they can do for you to fully, truly forgive that person. And so then the, the third point that I wanted to share this morning is that you that once once we get to that point and we and we forgive their their offenses, that then the, the next thing is even harder to do, which is then that you are to bless your offender. So first you've got to think about that person. Second, you've got to forgive because they won't be able to repay you back. They, they can't do enough for you to be okay with them. So then you just, God says, so just forgive them as I've forgiven you for all that you did so that, so that you can have a place with me. So I, I died for you so that you can have a place with me and you didn't have to work harder or pay me or anything. I gave you that. So he's asking us to do the same thing. So that person hurt me, but I can forgive them. And now he's saying, well, now I also want you to bless them. Same, same thing Christ does with us. As we ask him for forgiveness, you know, he forgives us, but then he blesses us. After, you know, a life of, of not believing in him, after a life of hurting him, he says, well, I just really wanted us to get to the point where we can have a relationship so I can use you now and I can bless you. Luke chapter 6 says, says, but I tell you, he says, if, if, you, if, if you're just, if you can hear me, he says, we're going to not just forgive our enemies, but we're going to love them. We're going to love them. If you have your, your little pieces of paper, and I don't have the, the scripture up here, but he says, I tell you, who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you. And then he says, pray for those who mistreat you. But did you, did you get that bless part? Bless those that hurt you. 
Um, and the Greek, that the root word really comes uh, where our, the word that we use in funerals, eulogy, and that's, that's where that comes from. And, and if, if you ever have gone to a funeral and heard a eulogy, what is the eulogy like? It's, it's nothing but good things about the person, right? It's saying good things about their life, who they used to be. You don't focus on all of their mistakes and all of the bad stuff that they did. Pro, even to you, you focus only on the good things of their life. And so God is asking us to do that. That person that hurt you, Edgar, I want you to bless them by thinking good thoughts of them, by praying for them, by loving them. I mean, I understand blessing uh, and thinking good thoughts about my, my family and praying for them, praying for my grandma, but praying for the person who caused this bitterness, he says, yes, I need you to do that. And that's the only way that you're going to be able to get rid of this. And so the thought really comes in, into play when we allow ourselves to realize that as followers of Christ, that we have a much, much more than what we've experienced in this lifetime. That the life after which comes in heaven with him is really what we're all after is why a lot of you became Christians in the first place. Of course, but you know that our eternal life doesn't begin after death. It begins the moment that you begin to believe in Christ and make him your Lord. And so then he begins to bless you. He fills your life. He gives you a new life. And he says he, he circumcises your heart so that you can be filled by him so that you can be holy. And when you're experiencing that in your life, then you're able to do the tough things that you know there's no way that you could forgive somebody who's done, done just awful things in your life. There's no way you're going to let that go. But God says, I need you to let that go because you belong to me now. That does not affect you and that is not a part of you. It will only affect you if you let it. So this morning, this morning it's, it's, it's about letting that that uh, letting God come in and into your heart and excavating that root out of bitterness. And of course, my list is, is not just one or two names, but my list is a little bit longer. And so what I've done is I've said, Lord, and, I, and I, in my prayer, I have, I've named these people. And I've said, Lord, would, will you forgive me, first of all, for holding on to that bitterness because of the, of the hurt that they did to me and my family? And, and I've been holding on to that for so long, and I, I know that I needed, needed to let it go, but I just didn't know quite how, because I've prayed about it, and I've been cordial with them when I see them, but I know in here, I'm still holding on. And so finally, I was able to pray this prayer and say, Lord, would you forgive, and I'm releasing them to you, and I have forgiven them. And now I'm, I, I will create opportunities to possibly restore that relationship with them. That's going to be the goal for me. Not just to release them and now I get to, I don't have to think about them anymore. No, I need to release them. But then if I'm going to, if I need to love on them, if I need to think about them as he's asking me, if I need to pray for them, then that means they're going to be a part of my life. So my goal is to restore a relationship with people I used to think I didn't ever want to see for the rest of my life. So if that's you today, I'm going to ask that you think about that and that you give God the opportunity to fix that, to change your heart, to change your mind about those people.